If you want to know how to work with composite shots and hit film, then you're in luck. Because that's what we're going to talk about today. HitFilm is a pretty capable non-linear editor, and it has decent audio tools. But where HitFilm truly shines is in the areas of VFX, compositing, and animation. And this is the domain of the composite shot. I'm Mike Miller with Trium Visual, and before we begin, let's talk about the differences between editor timelines and composite shots. The editor timeline is where one takes multiple media clips, whether audio, video, photos, or composite shots themselves, and places them in order to create a sequence or a scene. A composite shot is where media elements like video clips and photos, or generated media like text, planes, points, and procedural effects, including 3D models and 3D particle simulations in HitFilm Pro, are animated and layered together to create a single media clip for use on an editor timeline. The editor timeline is track-based. A track can contain multiple media clips, one after another, which makes it easy to edit a project. A composite shot is layer-based. A layer contains one, and only one, media clip in a contiguous block of time. Splitting an asset layer in a composite shot will generate another layer. The editor timeline starts with a default duration of five minutes. This can be altered in the options menu but will automatically and dynamically expand as new media clips are added. New media added to the end of an editor timeline will automatically expand the duration up to a maximum of three hours. A composite shot has a specific, defined duration. This duration can be set when creating the composite, and it can be altered at any time using the composite shot settings menu. But a composite shot will not automatically extend its duration if a media clip extends past the end of its timeline. The editor timeline uses the master dimensions and frame rate of the entire project, where composite shots have their own media properties, dimensions, and frame rates, which can be different from those of the editor timeline or from each other. There is one, and only one, editor timeline in any hit film project. A single hit film project can contain unlimited composite shots. Every composite shot can have its own resolution and own frame rate. Effects can be added to clips in the editor timeline, allowing you to change the look of a clip, but the effects in an editor timeline are not animated, and certain effects, those with a layer-only tag, cannot be used in the editor timeline. Effects can also be added to composite shot layers, but unlike in the editor timeline, effects in composite shots can be keyframed and animated to create sophisticated looks. The editor timeline is always 2D and clips in an editor timeline are static. Composite shot layers can be 2D or 3D and can be animated to grow, shrink, spin, fly around. Layers can be parented to each other to build complex animation rigs. Composite shots are where you build animations. Text cannot be added in an editor timeline. Text is added in composite shots. A single editor timeline clip can be converted into a composite shot but clips from the editor timeline cannot be cut or copy-pasted into a composite shot. But composite shots can be dragged into the editor timeline and treated as a single media clip. Composite shots can be dragged into other composite shots as a media clip. In HitFilm, we call this embedding. After Effects calls this pre-comping, while other software might call this nesting. This tutorial won't have a specific section on embedded composite shots, but as you go through the tutorial, you'll see that we reference embedded composite shots and demonstrate them over and over again. Embedding composite shots is a very powerful concept and tool in HitFilm. Composite shots do not have the audio editing tools of the editor timeline, although a few visual effects can use audio as a modulation source, and the Doppler shift audio effect must be applied in a composite shot timeline to generate position data needed to calculate the Doppler shift. Composite shots have a few other features to make playback and editing easier compared to editor timelines. A RAM preview allows you to quickly render a temporary view of a shot, and proxies let you pre-render a final quality version to your storage drive, literally turning a composite shot into a single video file. 
Composite shots also have tools for automated motion blur and depth fog to add depth and scale to 3D scenes. Switching between editor and composite shot timelines in HitFilm is pretty seamless. Just click on the timeline tabs or double click a composite shot in the media panel to open it. Finally, composite shots can be saved to disk and imported into other projects, while it is not possible to transfer editor timelines between HitFilm projects. The bottom line is if you are placing clips one after another to form a sequence, scene, or show, or are editing a complex audio mix, you should be working in the editor timeline. If you are creating text, complex visual layers, keying, anything animated, or anything in 3D space, you should be working in the composite shot timeline. So, how do we create composite shots? There are several ways of creating composite shots in HitFilm. First, by clicking the New Media button in the Media Panel. When creating a new composite shot, a menu pops up, similar to that of the new Projects dialog. The composite shot can be named, assigned dimensions and a frame rate, a pixel aspect ratio, and a duration. A template can be chosen from the drop-down list of preset dimensions and frame rates. The Match Timeline button sets the dimensions, frame rates, and aspect ratio to that of the previously defined project settings. The Advanced tab contains controls for motion blur and depth fog. We'll just leave these at the default for now, we'll be discussing those later in the tutorial. There are many other ways to create composite shots. By right-clicking on a media asset in the Media panel and selecting Make Composite Shot. For audio and video media, this creates a composite shot which defaults to the original length of the clip. By right-clicking on a media asset in the Editor timeline, you can create a new composite shot just using the frames of the asset that are already on the timeline. The Take Composite Shot Properties From options will either set the dimensions and frame rate of the composite shot to those of the selected clip or to those of the editor sequence. This is important if converting media that is a different size or frame rate from the editor timeline to a comp shot. Effects and transform properties can either be moved with the clip into the new composite shot or left on the editor timeline. Either way, the original media clip will automatically be replaced on the editor timeline with the new composite shot and the new comp will be opened up for editing. You can also create a new composite shot by clicking on the Make Composite Shot button on the Editor timeline with a media clip selected. It is not currently possible in HitFilm to select multiple clips on the Editor timeline and make them into a single composite shot. It is also not currently possible in HitFilm to copy or paste assets from the Editor timeline into a composite shot timeline. You can create a new comp shot by right-clicking on a single layer inside an active composite shot. Again, the new Composite Shot properties can be taken from the Media Asset or from the current Composite Shots properties. Effects and transformations can be moved into the new comp or left with the current comp. The selected layer will be replaced in the current comp by the new comp, and the new composite will open for editing. By right-clicking multiple layers in a composite and selecting Make Composite Shot, the dimensions and frame rates of the new composite will be taken from the current comp, the selected clips, their effects and transform properties will automatically move into the new composite shot, which will replace these layers on the original timeline. There are a few differences in the HitFilm interface when working with composite shots compared to editor timelines. Composite shots appear in the media panel, like any other media clip. Composite shots can be dragged to an editor timeline or to another composite shots layer by dragging from the media panel to the desired track or layer. Composite shots can be duplicated, deleted, and renamed in the media panel, as well as sorted into folders and subfolders. For more information on the media panel and folder organization, see my prior tutorials, Understanding the HitFilm Interface, and Editing in HitFilm. A playlist link for other HitFilm University tutorials is in the description below. Let's move over to the Timeline panel. Notice that in a composite shot timeline, the slip, slide, ripple, and roll tools are not available. These editing tools only work on tracks. The selection, hand, and rate stretch tools are unchanged from the editor timeline. The slice tool is a little different in a composite shot. Sliced media and comps will automatically be placed on a new layer, since only one media clip can be on any one layer. The snap and export in and out buttons are the same as in the editor timeline. The zoom slider is the same as in the editor timeline, but there is no submenu for setting track heights or thumbnail previews in a comp shot. 
Also, audio waveforms are not currently drawn in comp shots, although I do have reason to believe that this will be added in a future update of HitFilm 2017. Clicking the gear or cog icon on the lower left of the timeline panel opens up the same properties dialog as when you created your comp shot. Dimensions, duration, motion blur, depth fog settings can be changed for any composite shot at any time. New to HitFilm 2017 is a search field in the layer stack. By moving up to this search field and typing in keywords, the display of the layer stack can be filtered to show individual layers or properties. At the top of the timeline panel, along with the Make Composite Shot button and the previous next keyframe and toggle keyframe on off buttons, there are buttons to create new layers, plain text grade, media, light, and point, select preset interpolation curves for keyframes, or to open the value graph for full Bezier keyframing. Keyframes will be discussed more fully in a future tutorial. By right clicking on the time ruler, you can toggle between time code and absolute frames. Individual layers can be hidden or muted by clicking the eye icon on the left of the stack. Motion blur for a layer can be toggled off and on, and a layer can be toggled between 2D, 3D, and 3D unrolled, or a layer can be parented to another layer for complex animation. 2D, 3D, and 3D unrolled and parenting will be covered briefly in this tutorial, parenting more fully in a future tutorial. A composite shot can be closed at any time by clicking the X icon on the Timeline tab. This just closes the comp, it doesn't delete it. Composite shots can be reopened at any time by double-clicking them on the media panel or by dragging them into a timeline. The trimmer panel works exactly the same way in comp shots, except the Overlay Edit button is disabled. Since composite shots are layer-based, not track-based, adding a new clip from the trimmer window will always create a new layer. It should be noted that composite shots can't actually be trimmed in the trimmer window. The controls panel contains menus and submenus for a layer's properties, masks, effects, transformations, etc., depending on the type of layer that's active. Submenus all have this triangle icon. Clicking on the triangle twirls open the menu or submenu. Right clicking and selecting Collapse All will close all open submenus. In HitFilm 2017, the same search field as in the layer stack is active. Contents of the control panels can be filtered by typing keywords into this field. This is very much a time saver when working with complex effects stacks. Some properties will not have this triangle next to them. That doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have submenus, just that there's nothing assigned yet. This plus icon can be used to add or create an attribute. For example, the Tracks menu has no options until a tracker is created with the plus icon. Tracking will be covered thoroughly in a future tutorial. Effects can also be added with the plus icon, or by clicking and selecting Add Effect, or by dragging an effect to either the layer or the control menu from the effects panels. Masks do not have a menu until a mask has been created for the layer using the tools on the viewer panel. The same options as a Layers control panel can be opened in the layer stack of the Timeline panel. Opening the controls in the layer stack is important because it's only in the layer stack and the timeline where individual keyframes are displayed. The text panel shows controls for setting font, text size, text color, and other text attributes. This panel is inactive unless a text layer is selected on the timeline and the text tool is selected in the viewer panel. If editing existing text, that text must be highlighted in its text object. We'll talk more about text later on in this tutorial. The Lifetime panel is a HitFilm Pro only feature. It is inactive until an active particle layer is selected, and a particle system within that simulation is selected. 3D particle simulations will be covered in future tutorials. The Viewer panel has several controls and composite shots that are not found in the Editor timeline. The Active Camera menu becomes active when 3D layers in a camera exist. Using this, you can select between the Active Camera, a Perspective Camera, or several different orthogonal views. The Select tool can either directly select a layer in the Viewer panel, or is used with a selected layer's control widget to transform, rotate, or scale the active layer. This Hand tool scrolls the Viewer window when you are zoomed into a magnification larger than what the viewer can display. Clicking and holding the right mouse button when the Select tool is active also temporarily selects this tool. 
When a text layer is active and the text tool is selected, then the text panel actually does stuff. We're still not talking about text yet. The rectangle, oval, and freehand mask tools let you create masks. This orbit tool rotates the 3D camera around the currently selected layer. This is great for navigating in the perspective view. The floor plane and motion path toggles turn those options off and on when a 3D composite is active. This render options menu controls lights, shadows, motion blur, depth of field, reflections. You can click this once to toggle all options off and on, or you can click and hold to select individual options. In a 3D composite, you can subdivide the viewer panel in up to four views. Each view can be a different camera or orthogonal view. This local world view menu defines the orientation of an active object's control widget. Local orients the control widget to the orientation of the object. World orients the control widget to the coordinates of the 3D world space. View orients the widget as if you were looking straight down the z-axis. Channel select lets you decide whether to view the full RGB data, or you can view individual channels, red, green, blue, alpha, etc., in a grayscale mode. This resolution toggle sets viewer quality. Anti-aliased is what you'll get on output. Full is the default. You can turn this down to half or quarter for faster performance if you are getting lag with a complex composite. This options menu has toggles for all the stuff that we just talked about. You can also select a default background color, toggle the transparency checkerboards, adjust dual monitor options and hit film 2017, or choose to export the current frame as a still image. On the right side of the viewer panel are more camera controls. This dolly control moves the camera in and out along its z-axis. This pan control moves the camera along its x and y axes. The zoom control changes the zoom or field of view of the camera. And this rotate tool rotates the camera around its current position like it's on a tripod head. This viewer zoom sets the magnification of the viewer window. There are options for 100%, fit to view, and various zoom scales. The RAM preview button lets you quickly render out a shot or part of a shot just to the system RAM for quick checking. The RAM preview is not persistent. As soon as you make any changes to the layer, the RAM preview is cleared from memory. The amount of RAM HitFilm can dedicate to the RAM preview can be changed in the Options menu. Audio, video, or graphic and photo media can be added to a composite shot by dragging it in from the media pool or the trimmer window. If it's dragged over the layer stack, the media automatically begins at frame zero. By dragging the media into the timeline display, you can have the media start at any selected frame. Remember, composite shots are layer-based, so every media clip contained in HitFilm will create a new layer, and slicing a media clip will split the media across two layers. Media layers can be left as 2D or converted to 3D. HitFilm also has the option to create several other types of generated media layers. Generated media can be created by clicking on the New Layer button at the top of the timeline panel or by using the listed keyboard shortcuts. Plane layers are flat, single-colored rectangles. When creating a plane, its dimensions and color can be specified. Created planes appear in the media pool and can be reused in other comp shots or on the editor timeline just like any other media clip. Planes are great to start building visuals on top of with added effects. A plane's properties can be changed by right-clicking in the media pool and selecting properties. Changing the properties of a plane in the media pool will change all instances of that plane across all composite shots and the editor timeline. Like media layers, planes can be 2D or 3D. In other VFX software like After Effects, these may be called solids. Text layers. Clicking this button brings up a menu to set the size of the text object. You can also create a text object by selecting the text tool, clicking and dragging in the viewer panel. With an active text layer selected in the layer stack and the text tool selected, the text panel becomes active and you can create and edit text. Like plain and media layers, text can be 2D or 3D. This is the last time I'll tease text. Next time we talk about it, we'll actually go over its controls.
Creating a grade layer does something interesting. A grade layer is basically a flattened copy of every other layer below it. Effectively, a grade layer is an on-the-fly rendered video clip of all the layers underneath it. This makes grade layers one of the more powerful tools in a composite shot. The most basic way to use a grade layer is to drag an effect onto it, and the effect will act as if it's on all layers underneath the grade layer at once. Masking a grade layer can hard limit the range of an added effect. A grade layer can be made 3D, but should probably be left as 2D. We're going to come back to grade layers later on in this tutorial when we talk about rendering order of operations, but it should be noted that other software, including After Effects, sometimes calls a grade layer an adjustment layer. When working in 2D, you don't actually need a camera at all. The viewer window shows you what you're going to get. But once you start getting into 3D layers and compositing, you're going to need a camera layer. 3D cameras can be moved and rotated in 3D space, can have properties like their zoom adjusted and animated, can generate depth of field, and can be assigned to automatically face a selected point of interest or media layer. We're going to cover cameras more fully in a future tutorial. It is possible to create multiple cameras in a single composite shot. The highest active camera in a layer stack is always going to be the one driving the view in the viewer window. Having multiple cameras active in a layer at the same time can be useful. You might toggle between cameras to look at different parts of a shot, or in this particular animation, all of the camera cuts within the scene are actually cutting to different cameras. This entire animation is one long chunk. When working in 3D, you can also create and use light layers. HitFilm has four different kinds of lights that interact with 3D media layers. A point light is like a small light bulb that emits light in all directions. A spotlight emits light in a controllable cone. Directional lights are like infinite planes that emit parallel rays of light in a single direction and are very good for simulating things like suns. Ambient light is non-directional light that fills in all areas equally. Lights can have different intensities and colors and can be toggled to cast shadows or not. There are controls to change the color, opacity, and diffusion of a cast shadow. Point, spot, and directional lights can be moved around in 3D space, and point and directional lights can be rotated to face a certain direction. Lights will be covered more fully in a future tutorial. HitFilm can also create point layers. A point layer is unique in that there is no actual media associated with the point. It's an invisible marker layer. It only has position, orientation, rotation, and scale data. But point layers are incredibly powerful and will be used in your hit film work over and 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 over again. Points are very flexible and can be used to define things like the location of an effect, like perhaps the hotspot of a lens flare. A point can be used as a target to align a light, camera, or object layer. A point can be used to move, rotate or scale an object layer, and chains of points can be linked together to create complex animation rigs. Points will be covered more fully across several other tutorials because they are so flexible and so important to all aspects of VFX and compositing that I just can't do them justice right now. Other VFX and animation software might call points nulls. Let's talk a little bit about how HitFilm thinks. HitFilm renders the layers of a composite shot in a specific, defined order. Understanding this sequence can be vital to properly setting up shots and to avoiding a lot of confusion and headaches. In some ways, a composite shot is similar to traditional cell animation from way before the dawn of digital. In cell animation, an artist would create a background painting and this painting would be placed on the animation table, sometimes multiple background painting layers. Each character or object in the shot would have been drawn and painted on one or more individual sheets of transparent cellulose. The transparent cells would then have to be stacked in the proper order atop the background, from bottom to top, until an entire frame was composed. A cameraman would then shoot this frame to film, cells would be removed, and then the cells for the next frame would be replaced in the proper order bottom to top to compose the next frame. This was a lot of painstaking, precision, slow, manual work, and I have left out so many steps and procedures. Still, the HitFilm composite shot, like the cell animation, is read from the bottom of the layer stack 
to the top of the layer stack. 2D layers are rendered from bottom up in the order they occupy in the layer stack, with the layers alpha or transparency and opacity determining where and how they are displayed. When layers are 3D or 3D unrolled, layers are in a 3D space and are calculated by their 3D positions, not by their order in the layer stack. However, layer order is still important. See, 3D space in HitFilm is actually 3D spaces, plural. As HitFilm moves up the layer stack from bottom to top, once HitFilm encounters a 2D media layer, like a video, photo, or masked plane, or a grade layer, then all lower 3D layers are then rendered in the stack. So if you have a 3D setup and place a grade layer at the top to add, say, glows, but the 3D light is above the grade layer, that light is now in a different 3D space, and the lower layers will no longer be illuminated. This is actually advantageous as it gives options to have an object be affected by some lights in a scene but not in others. An individual layer in the layer stack is rendered from the top down, following the option shown in the control panel or by twirling down the controls in the timeline. Media layers are rendered in the order of properties, masks, effects, and then transformations. This means, for example, that if a mask is drawn on a layer and then a glow effect is added, the glow will still be visible around the mask. Grade layers, on the other hand, are rendered in the order of properties, transform, masks, then effects. This is not a trivial difference. For example, masks on grade layers are absolute edges. If a mask is drawn on a grade layer and a glow is added, the edge of the mask will chop off the edge of the glow. The next thing to talk about is the difference between raw and baked or flattened layers. Many of HitFilm's effects have an option to use a source layer. These effects look at a raw version of the layer, and the raw version of a layer is its initial state before masks, effects, or transformations have been applied. The best way to talk about this is with a quick demonstration. So let's create a plane object and name it surface. Duplicate the plane, name the duplicate fractal, and drag a fractal noise to it. Then create a point light and drag that way out into space. I'm going to drag the caustics effect onto surface. Twirl open the controls and look for height map. Under height map is an option for a source layer. I'm going to select fractal and set the wave height to 20. Not much happens. This is because the height map layer control is looking at the raw version of fractal. Since the raw version of Fractal is before any masks, effects, or transformations have been applied, the raw version of Fractal is a white plane. I'm going to right-click on Fractal and select Make Composite Shot. I want the properties of the comp shot to come from the selected layer, but I want to move the effects with the layer. And now we see something is happening. Embedded composite shots have all the effects and masks applied and rendered before the embedded composite shot is read. This means that the effects and masks in the embedded composite shot have now been baked in. So the raw state of the composite shot is the complete composite shot. The raw state of a grade layer is a baked version of all the layers below the grade. Let's undo making fractal an embedded composite shot, create a grade layer, Go back to the controls in Surface and set the grade layer as the new source layer. And once again, the height map is taking effect. HitFilm has a range of 2D blend modes. These are available in composite shots and in the editor timeline. The blend mode of a layer can be changed by right-clicking on a layer in the layer stack and using the blend mode menu or by selecting a blend mode from the layer properties menu in the control panel. These blend modes are mathematical transformations that compare the selected layer to the layers below. Some blend modes brighten the overall image, some blend modes darken the overall image, and some blend modes just do really weird color things. Blend modes will be fully covered in a later tutorial. HitFilm has three different compositing modes for layers, 2D, 3D, and 3D Unrolled. 2D layers are rendered in layer stack order, 
from the bottom up according to its transparency and alpha channel. Some hit film effects like 3D extrusion, parallax, atomic particles, Boris 3D objects, as well as 3D models and particle sims in HitFilm Pro can generate pseudo 3D effects. In pseudo 3D, the camera itself acts as if the effect is in a full 3D space. The effect can be moved or rotated on all three axes. But the final rendered layer itself is still a 2D plane. Interactions with other layers are solely by layer stack order and alpha channel, not by camera object distance. 2D layers, including particle simulations and 3D models, can have other effects filters applied. 3D layers can be moved in full 3D space. A video, graphic, or plane layer kind of becomes like a flat card. A 3D layer can fully interact with scene lights and will interact with or occlude other 3D layers by relative camera and object distance. A 3D model or 3D particle sim in 3D mode will act as if the layer boundary is a window into the 3D render. Areas of the model or particle sim that extend beyond the layer edge will be chopped off. For models and particles, it's the actual rendered plane, that flat card that is in 3D space and not the model or particle sim itself. 3D planes can be masked and have other effects applied. 3D Unrolled only applies to 3D models and 3D particle sims in HitFilm Pro or can be applied to embedded composite shots in all versions of HitFilm. Multiple 3D unrolled layers will properly interact with and occlude each other. HitFilm calls this 3D Unified Space, space. and it's very powerful. The gang at HitFilm produced a great tutorial last year on placing a green screened actor as a 3D layer inside a 3D unrolled helicopter without needing to use any kind of masking, keying, or other blending tricks. It just worked. You can find that tutorial on the HitFilm's YouTube page. HitFilm also produced a heads-up tutorial which showed how an advanced HUD display could be built by using multiple 3D planes in a composite shot. Then that composite shot embedded in the main animation in 3D unrolled mode, which collapsed the entire HUD to a single layer while allowing for the individual elements to keep their 3D positioning. This tutorial can be found on HitFilm's YouTube page. Or, in this shot, a 3D plane of a TIE fighter pilot has been placed inside the cockpit of a 3D unrolled model, thus allowing the camera to pull completely out of the cockpit with the pilot properly occluded. HitFilm's rendering order still applies to 3D unrolled layers, 3D unrolled layers are calculated for correct occlusion and interaction, but are not rendered until HitFilm hits a 2D layer, or the top of the layer stack. Because of the way HitFilm calculates 3D unrolled model or particle layers not rendering them until it hits a 2D layer, this means it is not possible to add effects or masks to 3D unrolled model or particle sims. Editing media in composite shots is very similar to editing media on the editor timeline. Media added to a composite shot can have its in-out points changed by dragging the handles, and it can be moved in time by clicking and dragging along the timeline. And after resizing a clip in the composite shot timeline, you will notice what I call a ghost bar, a lower opacity continuation of the bar that shows the full original duration of the clip. Note that the slip, slide, ripple, and roll tools are not available in composite shots. These effects only work on tracks, and the composite shot timeline is layer-based. The select, hand, and rate stretch tool work just like in the editor timeline. You can add effects to clips in a composite shot by right-clicking on the media and selecting an effect from the context menu, or effects can be dragged to a layer from the effects menu. Effects can also be dragged from the effects menu directly to the controls panel. 3D presets from the effects panel can be dragged onto layers. 3D effects can be set to 2D, 3D, or 3D unrolled. Just like in the editor timeline, effects presets can be dragged from the effects panel, and effects chains can be saved for later reuse. For more information on using effects chains, see my earlier tutorial on importing and exporting everything in HitFilm. There are two ways to create text in HitFilm. The first is by clicking on the New Text Layer button, and a dialog box will open up 
letting you set the pixel dimensions of the text object layer. The other way to create a text object in HitFilm is to select the text tool and click and drag inside the viewer window. This will draw a text object box. Once a text object has been created and the text object is selected, you can go over to the text panel. In the text panel are controls for choosing your font, setting the size of the font, setting the kerning, which is the horizontal space between letters, the letting, which is the vertical space between lines, a color for the text, an outline width and outline color for the text, and left, center, or right justification. Multiple fonts, font sizes, text and outline colors can be combined in a single text object by changing the parameters as you type. Once your text has been typed, clicking and dragging to select text inside the box will allow you to change the fonts sizes, colors, and justification at any time you want. There's also a box to select bold, italic, and regular text. This doesn't work with every font, but it's always worth checking out. Once a text layer has been created, it can be scaled and rotated in 2D or 3D space, like any other media clip, and effects can be added to it from the effects panel, again, just like any other media clip. HitFilm has the ability to set up parenting relationships for more complex animations. Parenting is set up by using the drop-down menu to the right of the layer stack. The layer selected in the menu is the parent. The layer selecting the parent is a child. In a parent-child relationship, the child follows the parent. Moving the parent will move the child with it. However, the child can still move independently of the parent layer. Complex animation rigs can be made with chains of parenting. In this example, there is a point. The point is the parent of the green plane. The green plane is the parent of the red plane, and the red plane is the parent of the cyan plane. Moving the point drags all three planes with it. Moving the green plane moves the red and the cyan plane with it, but leaves the point where it is. Moving the red plane moves the cyan plane, but leaves the green plane and the point alone. While animating the cyan plane on its own, does nothing with the red plane, the green plane, or the point. Parenting will be covered more fully in a future tutorial. HitFilm has sophisticated tools for keyframe animation. What is keyframe animation? Keyframing goes back to the days of traditional animation, where a key animator would draw extreme poses. Then those poses would be handed off to an in-betweener to fill in the rest of the motion. Digital animation works in a similar fashion. The animator sets a keyframe and lets the computer interpolate the rest of the motion. To activate keyframe animation in HitFilm, look for a parameter in the controls panel that has a hollow gray circle. Clicking this hollow gray circle will turn it blue. When it's blue, this means keyframing has been activated. To keyframe, all you need to do is set a value at a particular frame, then move to another frame and change the value. HitFilm will automatically interpolate between the two values. There are many parameters in HitFilm that can be keyframed, including transform parameters like anchor point, scale, position, and rotation, and most effect parameters can be keyframed as well. HitFilm has many tools to refine and navigate your keyframes. We've already discussed on top of the timeline the previous and next keyframe and toggle keyframe on and off buttons. Next to that, are several icons to select several different preset interpolation curves, ranging from linear, which is an even spread of values, through smooth, which is an automatic ease in, ease out, or constant, which holds a keyframe value until the next keyframe is reached. For the most advanced control of your animations, HitFilm offers a value graph. Activating the value graph lets you draw manual Bezier curves to refine the speed of your animation. By combining parenting and keyframe animation, 
it is possible to create complex animations in HitFilm. Keyframe animation in HitFilm will be another topic covered more fully in a future tutorial. HitFilm also has tools for masking and rotoscoping. Using masks, you can define the area of a layer that you want to be visible. Masks can be drawn on a layer by using the rectangular, elliptical, or freehand mask tools. Once a mask has been drawn, a mask can be feathered to have a soft edge, and masks have their own transform groups. A mask can be scaled, rotated, moved, even reshaped, and the properties of a mask can be keyframed. Masking, along with matting, keying, and control maps in general, will be covered in detail in a future tutorial. HitFilm contains a one and two point tracker for motion tracking. A one point tracker tracks the position of an object on screen, while a two point tracker can track position, rotation, and scale. The basic procedure for tracking in HitFilm is to select the layer that you want to track, move to the layer controls, and hit the plus icon next to tracks. This will automatically open up the tracker panel where you can place the one or two control points for the tracker. Let HitFilm automatically track the objects. Then choose whether you want to use the tracking data to stabilize the layer that you've tracked or attach another object to it. Once you've tracked an object in HitFilm, you'll need to switch the layer tab back to the viewer tab in the viewer panel. Tracking in HitFilm can be useful for all kinds of tasks like locking muzzle flashes to a gun or locking a pixelation over someone's face for witness protection. While the tracking in HitFilm is only 2D, with a little bit of cleverness, you can fake 3D position data. The team at HitFilm did this in the Heads Up tutorial I mentioned earlier. Tracking will be covered in depth in a future tutorial. HitFilm has automated motion blur for 3D layers, 3D models, and 3D particle simulations. HitFilm also has a motion blur effect that can be dragged to 2D layers to try and simulate motion blur on video. The motion blur effect uses the main motion blur settings for the composite shot to generate its values. The motion blur controls can be accessed by clicking the settings cog at the bottom left of the layer stack and going to the advanced tab. Motion blur can be toggled off and on, or you can adjust the shutter angle, shutter phase, number of samples, and adaptive. Shutter angle controls the amount of blur. Shutter angle is simulating the rotary shutter that was used in an old film camera. A film camera shutter would have been a round plate spinning in front of the film, with a cutout that would allow light to be in. The default is 180 which means the shutter is open for one half of the frame rate. This is the most typical speed for shutters. Lower values to shutter angle equal less motion blur. Higher values equal more motion blur. HitFilm allows shutter angle to go up to 720 degrees, which would be a level of blur impossible in a physical camera, but sometimes you want that much blur. Shutter phase simulates how a camera shutter moves in relation to the film. For a realistic look, shutter phase should be a negative value that is half of the shutter angle. Altering the shutter phase will change the look of the blur by simulating a shift in how the gap in the open shutter moves over the film plane. The max samples control, the max samples controls the amount of images calculated to make the motion blur smear. Higher values will equal a smoother motion blur but will require more time to calculate. The Use Adaptive toggle attempts to speed up render times by automatically using fewer samples for slower movements. However, sometimes this can lead to undesirable ghost imaging. For the most realistic motion blur, turn adaptive samples off, but understand that the more samples that you use, the slower your motion blur will calculate and the longer your render times will be. Motion blur has been covered fully in this tutorial. What a surprise! HitFilm also has an automated depth fog for 3D compositing. Depth fog can be accessed by clicking on the settings cog at the bottom left of the layer stack and going to the advanced tab. The depth fog controls include a near clip distance, which is where the fog begins to take effect measured in pixels away from the camera. The far clip distance 
is where the fog hits its maximum density. The density controls the overall thickness of the fog, and usually should be left at a low number. Somewhere between 0.01 and 0.05 works well for me. You can set a color for the fog, which, if you're using a video plate as a background, is often best sampled from the horizon. The fall-off controls how the fog density increases between the near and far clip distance. The fog density can increase linearly, exponentially, or exponentially squared. Note that when depth fog is activated, it is always on. Depth fog is not a parameter controlled by the render settings in the lower left of the viewer panel. So often, you'll want to tune your depth fog, then turn that off as you continue to refine your animation, and finally, turn that on before rendering. With careful use of depth fog parameters and carefully selected colors, depth fog is an easy way to add proper atmospheric haze to your 3D renders. And that's pretty much all that needs to be said about depth fog. Visual effects and animation are among the most complicated things you can do on a computer. It doesn't matter how fast or powerful your computer is, at some point, you're going to encounter lag. So what do you do once you've already optimized your media and turned your viewer down to quarter? Well, HitFilm has a couple of tools to help you out. The first is RAM Preview. RAM Preview is activated by clicking on the Create RAM Preview button next to the Playback button in the viewer window in a composite shot. RAM Preview renders out your project to the system RAM. A RAM Preview is intended as a temporary playback measure. It's not persistent, and as soon as you make any further changes to the composite shot, the RAM Preview is going to go away. RAM Previews are just for spot checking your work. If you go into the Options menu, under File, you can change the amount of system RAM allocated to the RAM Preview. In versions of HitFilm prior to HitFilm 2017, the maximum RAM for RAM Preview is 4GB. But with HitFilm 2017 and up, you can set as much of a RAM Preview as you want. The second way to speed up workflow is with the Proxy function. Proxies is a bit of a misnomer. Traditionally, a proxy is a low-resolution file used to speed up workflow, which is replaced with a final full-resolution file before rendering. HitFilm's proxies are more accurately pre-renders. HitFilm's proxies are full-resolution, lossless, full-quality video files that are suitable for final output render. One or more media clips or composite shots can be assigned to be proxied by right-clicking on the media in the media pool and selecting Make Proxy. HitFilm will render proxies in the background. This will be a single-threaded process to allow you to continue to work on your project, so proxy renders are not as fast as a fully committed render, but that's the price you pay for being able to work on the rest of your project while the proxy is rendering. Once a proxy is completed, a proxy is a full-resolution video file that should play back relatively quickly. The proxy, again, can be used for final output. Be aware that proxies are intended to be done on composite shots or files that are more or less considered locked. If you go back into the composite shot after proxying it and make changes to the composite shot, you will invalidate the proxy and have to render it again. Being lossless files, proxies do take up a lot of disk space. You can clear proxies by right-clicking on a proxied composite shot and selecting Erase Proxy, and you can manage the proxy directory by going into the Options menu under File. More information on managing the proxy directory can be found in our earlier tutorial on the HitFilm interface. And that just about does it for this week. Once again, I'd like to thank everybody for sitting through yet another long HitFilm University tutorial. I'm Mike Miller with Triam Visual. I hope you found this information useful, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.